So what's this elusive tech that we are talking about that BYD have just launched? As you may have heard, it's actually the next generation ADA system that they have launched called God's Eye. It's slightly going to be rolled out or at least they plan to roll out for all vehicles from the lowest end to the highest end in the BYD range. So welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking it from a different angle. I'm sitting at the back of the car. I don't actually get to uh, sit behind here very often. Um, but yeah, like my kids said, it's very, very comfortable and I tend to have agreed with them. So much so that they actually brought some pillows to make it super more comfortable for them. Um, but yeah, so today we'll be talking a little bit about the God's Eye and why I personally think it is probably unlikely to be landing anytime on our shore soon. So just to set a bit of context of what God's Eye really is, essentially, like I mentioned previously, it's uh, the next generation ADA system that is being launched by BYD. And it's being launched in three different flavors. Uh, there's quite a bit of details in each of those flavors. So I've actually got some handy notes here, so make sure that I don't actually miss it. Essentially, they have uh, God's Eye C, God's Eye B, and God's Eye A. So God's IC is designed for, I'll just read it out loud, for entry-level BYD vehicles. It has 12 cameras, 5mm wave radars, uh, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and powered by a new operating system. And God's IB will be targeted at mid-range models, which adds LiDAR technology for enhanced environmental sensing. Of course, whatever that's in C is in B as well. And the highest end is God's Eye A, which is reserved for the luxury models uh, like the Yang Wang range. And it features three LiDAR sensors and obviously new uh, capabilities um, from the operating system as well. So as you can see, um, it's whatever that we're getting here in the region, which is largely uh, the lowest range or uh, between the low and the mid range. Uh, it's going to likely get God's IC if it ever gets rolled out. And the Denzas will get the God's Eye B with LiDAR, which is going to be very, very interesting. Because today, when we look at LiDAR implementations, you get it in the robo-taxis like uh, Waymo. But in com consumer cars, we haven't really seen a mass rollout or implementation of that. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, none of this today is available outside of China. And obviously, they have launched it in China. So much so that they are talking about launching it in the most basic model, which is the Seagull, which costs sub one uh, sub ten thousand us dollars which is pretty impressive so the question some of the viewers have also asked me is that what are the likelihood of this coming to say singapore thailand malaysia uh, even australia where you know we could actually retrofit this so here are my thoughts though i might be wrong but i think um, there is a very high unlikelihood that we will be able to retrofit this simply because if you look at the base model of uh, god's ic the fact that it comes with 12 uh, cameras and various uh, ad additional uh, sensors, that's quite a bit of a job for anybody who's going to take on the role of retrofitting this. Not to mention the potential cost that comes with it. We also don't actually know if retrofitting it also means you know, recalibration, etc. Uh, obviously, installing new operating system is not light work by any means. And even if we think that that's possible, the question really is, will the car dealers be willing or open to actually doing it? As you know, you know, car dealers want to sell more cars. The fact that you can retrofit stuff in your existing car doesn't always bode very well. I mean, I, I beg to differ. I mean, some may disagree with me, but uh, I really think that dealers probably want to sell you more cars rather than retrofitting facelifts or, you know, uh, technology upgrades on an existing car. The next challenge is even more challenging why this will be unlikely. It's uh, around regulations of each and every one of our countries that is going to potentially implement this capability. So what exactly are the challenges around uh, autonomous driving? Autonomous driving is classified into a couple of levels. If I'm not mistaken, there's almost like six different levels of autonomous driving. From the very basic level one, which is what we have in most of our cars. Uh, we're talking about lane keep assist, uh, cruise controls, um, safety uh, distancing between, uh, or rather adaptive cruise controls. Those are what we call as level one. Level two is more akin to what we are already kind of pseudo familiar with, with Tesla's uh, FSD, where the car kind of self-pilots or autopilots in most cases. And then level three, a little bit more advanced and so on and so forth. So specifically, God's IC kind of breaches and touches into level two, which in itself is a challenge. 
because the reason why Tesla FSD isn't available widely in a lot of countries is mainly because the fact that many uh, countries hasn't ratified the approval use of level two on their roads and streets. You've probably heard by now, you know, the Tesla FSD in the US at level two isn't completely foolproof as well. I mean, there's obviously contradicting reports of um, accidents and safety concerns. So I can kind of imagine why other countries are also very cautious in allowing uh, autonomous driving level two. So at this point, the only two countries uh, that have allowed it to a certain extent is obviously the US and China uh, primarily. Uh, other countries are still looking into it or maybe trialing or testing it or piloting it in a smaller co compound uh, or constraint. But net of it is that I don't actually think a lot of countries are ready to adopt it just yet. This in itself is a major, major stumbling block for uh, God's eye to ever be implemented anywhere near our region, at least anytime soon. Even if it does, it requires a lot of training uh, to adapt to local road regulations and conditions. For example, you know, Australia may have unique uh, traffic uh, situations where like, for example, if I, I kind of pull an example that I can remember is Melbourne has its hoop turn that's a bit unique to the rest of the world. Obviously, Singapore has its little unique capability, uh, unique kind of nuances, etc, etc. And so do other countries. And if you want to kind of go down the path of uh, autopilot while navigating through a map, then you need to talk about map accuracy and, you know, are we for certain that some of the countries have really spot on map accuracy or it's kind of still flaky in most cases. So there's a lot of things to consider uh, before anything that is level two or level three and above gets implemented into the um, traffic environment and road safety in most countries. So with these two big challenges in itself, um, I personally really, really think it's probably very highly unlikely we'll see it anytime soon. But the question now is, how does this impact our existing ICC or intelligent cruise control? So some viewers and some uh, feedback from the audiences was like, oh, you know what, because they're focusing so much on God's eye, ICC is probably going to be just left aside and there'll be no more development. And some of you may also know that the ICC is far from perfect and there's a lot of room for improvement. So here's my take on it. I highly doubt that BYD is going to stop doing any improvements on ICC. Here's why. The hardware that is built for the ADA system that powers the ICC today is probably one of the better ones in the market in terms of hardware. I'm not talking about software and it's probably comparable with uh, most vendors out there, the likes of Tesla, etc, etc. So the implementation really is from a software perspective. I feel that the software, you know, still has a roadmap and still has much to grow. But having said that, I am quite bullish that the fact that that's something that can be uh, perfected and modified in the software to make it better. Hence, I would think the God's Eye development will in turn help ICC. Because with most things in tech, not just cars, but you know, even mobile phone, etc., uh, tech capabilities tend to trickle down to the you know lower tiers, unfortunately, and it becomes a little bit more mainstream. And why? Part because there, there is a larger sample size for collecting data and also testing out stuff, right? So I personally really feel that the ICC has a lot more in store, and the fact that it, you know God's eye may not ever come to our region is not a bad thing for ICC in the long run. If you're enjoying this content, do check out some of my other videos on the channel, uh, and you can find a lot of BYD related material. So that's all I have for you today. A very very short one uh, because there were a lot of questions asking me about my ICC experiences and what God's eye were, and I'll see you guys in the next one.